Hey guys, so today I want to talk about whistle tones. And these sounds are incredibly difficult. They're hard to teach, they're hard to master, and they're just hard. And that's why I want to talk about them is because they take time to learn and they take time to master. And if you don't start before you need to play them, it's very, very difficult to learn under pressure. I'm gonna use a piccolo for this video because they speak easier on piccolo. Something to keep in mind if you have to learn them, if you can start on piccolo, it's gonna make your life easier because they speak easier on piccolo. They're okay on C flute, but and especially on the low flutes, they're very, very difficult. So. Basically, you're skimming over the tops of the overtone series, and you're getting a very, very high-pitched whistle sound. Kind of tea kettle-esque, um, and they're very unstable. I've practiced them a lot, and so I'm able to kind of pick out real pitches, but a lot of the time, they're going to be very warbly. That's an, kind of the nature of the beast because the specific pitches are very hard to isolate and anytime your air pressure changes, the pitch is going to change because they're very, very subtle. Basically, what you're doing is dropping your air pressure completely, tightening your embouchure, and then using very, very little air. And it's making the flute whistle. They change with the fingerings because you're playing off of the overtone series and there are ways to get stable pitches once you're practiced, but at first just getting that sound is the goal. The easiest way to accidentally create them is when you're trying to taper a pitch and instead of closing your embouchure and keeping your air pressure up, you just drop your air pressure. A lot of people have probably had the experience where it creates the whistle tone sound without ever trying, and the problem is now you have to recreate that purposefully. Honestly, if you're struggling to figure out even how to make the sound, recreate the situations where you're tapering a note and the whistle tones appear. And instead of just going, oh shoot, I did that wrong, Think about what you did, how your air is moving, and what your embouchure was like. Unfortunately, every flute is different and every flutist is different, and I can't necessarily explain exactly how to do it, but what I can say is it's very, very slow, very minimal air. Obviously, that's a very controlled version of what most people do when they're first starting whistle tones. I've been practicing this for years, but going from full pitch to fuzzy air to whistle tone is the best way to start getting them. If you can't get a stable pitch, don't worry about it. That will come later, but it is something that you have to really actively think about. And the other thing that makes them really difficult is the fact that you're dropping your air pressure and you're nervous. Most flutists and most musicians in general rely on years of practice to produce the sounds they do in performance. Most of us are trained to keep your air pressure up, to have nice full sound and fast air. So when you're nervous, your body is trained to keep your air pressure up and to not create whistle tones. But when you have to create whistle tones, you have to find a way to relax, drop your heart rate, get your body to not kick into overdrive and kick into autopilot, and to actively drop your air pressure. 
It's a conscious decision and it's a conscious action. And that's what makes it so difficult is it goes against everything we've ever been trained to do. So how do you practice that? And the answer is get yourself nervous. Running up and down stairs simulates the heart rate issue. And if that helps, then do that. If someone watching you practice makes you nervous, then do that. Put yourself in a situation where you are nervous and try to produce those sounds. It won't be successful at first. No one is. <laughs> um, I remember performances in Toronto where I was first learning how to do whistle tones and they had been fine in every single rehearsal. But the minute there was pressure to produce them, I freaked out and couldn't get my air slow enough and couldn't get my embouchure right. I just couldn't do it. As I got older and started practicing them more and getting more used to them, I was able to combat those nerves more effectively and take control over what I was doing. And yes, obviously you're looking at me like, of course I should be in control the whole time, but there's a reason we practice. It's so that when we're nervous, we have a technical facility to fall back on and we know that our fingers and our face and our body knows what to do. That's the whole point of practicing. And yes, this is a very specific sound that you don't have to use all that often, but when you do need to use them, they need to be right. They need to be there. Um, the last thing is they are very, very quiet. There is one dynamic and they will not be able to speak over an ensemble. If you are a composer interested in writing whistle tones, you must do it in a situation where the flutist is alone. It's probably not going to speak in a large hall unless it's amplified. And if there's anyone else playing with it, you're not going to hear them. The best way to guarantee that whistle tones will speak is to amplify the flutist but you also have to keep in mind that that's added pressure on the flutist. And if they're inexperienced with whistle tones, those nerves and that fear that I was just talking about are going to be worse. So be very, very careful with whistle tones. They're very cool. I really like them, but they're very, very difficult and they're very, very limited.